Couple things after watching that last set. Hat backwards, just absolutely not the move. Um, and confirming that I'm absolutely dog water at uh, high pulse, bro. It's Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, what is up, YouTube? We are back with another day. Um, I'm sick of Welty and Henry and Evie coming at my ass. All right, I'm getting my life together here, and we will be on a consistent posting schedule at least four times a week. All right, we're going to get our four workouts in today, um, this week, okay? Um, last week was a little bit of a shit show. We had uh, a trip to Wisconsin that was kind of like last second planned. We went to Wisconsin. And God, I, I have never been manhandled more in my life. We showed up 10 minutes before the game, um, and we played this, uh, shoot, what's their name? I'm blanking on their name now. Composure, hold up, let me get their name. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause this, pause this, let me get the name. The name of the team that destroyed us. Oh, Coma, their name is Comatose. They're like the number one B or A team in, uh, in the nation. And we showed up 10 minutes before game time after a three and a half hour drive, got out of the car and got absolutely boogie whipped, bro. I hit like a hundred mile an hour fastball at this shortstop and he fielded it like I bunted it. And I've never been a more emasculated in my life. Um, we lost a game one to 21 and um, my soul hurts a little bit. So we are back to the drawing board. We have a lot of work to do to reach that level. And uh, it was cool. It was cool to have a weekend like that. Um, it's not, it wasn't really cool in the moment, but right now looking back at it, there's just a lot to learn. Um, Batting average was terrible. Whole team's batting average was terrible. Everything we did was pretty much terrible. And uh, just got to find a way to lock back in. I think the biggest things I was taking notes on just for the future is just you got to see more live pitches. It's really early in the season still, but see more live pitches. A lot of stuff off the tee has helped the form a lot, um, but haven't really faced a ton of good pitchers uh, and pitchers that throw good knuckleballs, pitchers that throw high and short, and pitchers that have pitches that look the same. And obviously it's softball, so it's way easier than like baseball, but still some of these pitchers have nice stuff. And I think the biggest thing is the pitchers will pitch to their defense in softball. So like they'll throw a super inside ball and just have their whole defense play a shift and you have to find a way to either hit it hard enough to get it through or push the ball somehow, some way. Whereas um, at the lower levels, they kind of just, they're trying to throw strikes. Otherwise you take a walk uh, and these guys can throw strikes automatically. So it's really not a try for them. It's only when they really mess up do they leave that ball over the middle. And um, so got a lot to work on there um, and apologize for not getting the videos out, but we got a leg day today on a Monday. We're going to switch up our schedule, do a leg day on Monday. One, because I was behind from last week. Two, because I think it'll fit the schedule just a little bit more. Um, as our, So we start our first, with our team, first real tournament this uh, this weekend. Um, not that the other ones haven't been real, but this is the first one with our Yoakum Strength team, with our Run for Iron team this weekend. Um, and I don't really want to end the week on a leg day if I don't have... If I like, if I have a choice not to, so we'll go legs upper, legs upper, and then we have a bunch of time to recover for the um, for the weekend, and uh, whether that's psychological or not, I just want to be able to make sure I get all my leg days in without having to ever skip it. Oh, and and with travel coming up too, like last week I skipped Fridays, um, did skip it, but wasn't able to record it and didn't get like the full lift in. We only got the main stuff done because uh, we were traveling to Wisconsin, and I think the more I travel, the more it's gonna be kind of like that. So it would be nicer to have that day be an upper body day where we're just ripping upper body, and then we can travel after that. Super nice. Um, back's a little cranky today, and I'm gonna talk about that with some of the Olympic lifting substitutions we have. Um, the three and a half hour car ride. Car ride's sitting, man, I know. Like the whole sitting is smoking is like the over, overanalyzed, over like a demonized thing. But man, sitting really does mess me up, really does mess my back up. That's one of the best things I've done and shifted to help my back pain is not sit a ton. Like my life is just, I'm always moving. It's not even like a conscious thing like I don't sit. Like when I sit and talk here, I sit. But it's not like three hours in a row, like when we had class was, right? And we go to this, uh, we go to Wisconsin, sit in the car, do some rotational stuff, and then we come back out and sit in the car again. It's a pretty quick day. Like, I mean, it wasn't a quick day, but we had two games. We lost to both, got destroyed by two teams that were just significantly better than us, and then had a three-hour car drive back. So six hours in a car um, with not a ton of movement in between and back, just locked up. It's, it, it's tight. So trying to stay out of that sitting, trying to keep moving. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll sub some things. I warmed up a bunch before this, so we're two sets deep into all the jumps and lifts, and we'll record the jumps after this. And then uh, Olympic lifting substitutions. We'll hit some squats today, and we'll kind of go from there. But uh, yeah, feeling a little cranky today, but just just gotta keep moving. Once I start moving, it feels good. But um, just something to keep in mind. Uh, not really sure where I was going with that. I'm gonna be honest. I thought I had an idea where I was gonna wrap that up into talking about something, but didn't really click there. So. 
uh, we're gonna go lift and we're gonna shut up and actually we're gonna go jump and we're gonna shut up and we're gonna go from here. So let's go, boom, let's get it. So horizontal jump movement problem of the day. I really enjoy this one. We're going left, right, bounce into a double jump. So we'll go left leg, right leg, double leg, broad jump after that, kind of stick it from there. Nice and elastic, feels fun. Um, I've just found the more you can get of athletes, something to jump off of a different surface, not even for the, the parkour aspect that we talked about in another video, but it's something to reach for, like an external thing rather than just the ground. Many times the athlete looks way better and has way more fun with the exercise itself than if it's just flat ground. So simple things like just adding in a plate or um, a different, like sometimes we have like foam pads over there that they can jump off of, but a lot of times the engagement goes way up. Um, and for myself, it's the same as way as well. Just so if I have something to reach for, something to like kind of jump off, I don't know, trigger something in you that's like, oh, that was fun. So, here we go. Might go backwards at actually. <sighs> Oof. All right, I'm a beast, so I gotta back this up. You switch up the distance here. I really like just the, again, the elastic component of it. Um, something I'm not very good at, but when you see a really elastic athlete perform this one, it's like bounce, 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 and they continue the speed on throughout it. Um, looks really athletic. Again, things that look really athletic a lot of times are really athletic. And it's like this weird dynamic that when you have athletic athletes do athletic things, they will always tell you the drills that are the best. They'll be like, oh my God, that one was awesome. And this is definitely one of them. Ooh. All right. Then we hit like three-ish sets here. Um, Nothing too intense, but this one's feeling fun. I might do another set. Uh, we'll kind of see. Just continue to push the distance here. I really should have brought out a cone to measure that. So I had some um, kind of measurables. Again, measure it, measurables. Um, but an external goal to kind of go and reach. Um, but I really like the bouncy feeling of this. Sometimes when I bring out that cone, it's a little less bouncy. But I really like this one. <laughs> Oof. Boom. Vertical jump movement problem of the day. We got single leg jumps off of here over the hurdle. Um, again, athletes that are strictly two leg jumpers, it's nice to just force them into a single leg jump sometimes. And a lot of times, single leg jumpers, sorry, they're kicking the ball, I'm making sure my camera doesn't get hit. Sometimes when they have a, they're a two leg jumper, forcing them to go single leg is nice. And when they're only a double leg jumper, I'm messing that up. And when they're only a single leg jumper, forcing them to go double leg is nice, just to work on different aspects of it. Sometimes, like I thought it was a two leg jumper, and a lot of times I two leg jump, but when I dunk, I'm a single leg dunker. And I didn't really do that until, uh, Till Stu Bourne, one of my mentors just told me, try single leg jump just because I had a lot of velocity into my jump. And as soon as I went there, I had like three more inches on the jump, but that was just strictly because I wasn't slowing down as much with that two leg jump. So um, we're gonna go single leg jump, over. Um, pushing the height here, man. These are, we should get pretty high here. Let's go. Oh, there we go. Nice and easy. Oh, push the height a little bit more. I kind of want to try approaching it from this side. I can do when it dunks. Oh, all right. Kind of bailed on that. Here we go. Oh yeah, way easier. All right, I like approaching from that side a little bit more. Oh, there we go. Oh, let's go. Keep it bumping. What are we jamming to? We're jamming to Queens of King by Alessandra and Gabri Ponte. Again, no music because we lose our money when we get music. Oh, there we go. Oh, keep pushing, let's go. So this could be something where we talk about the technical aspects of things, like what's the right or wrong technical model. Um, approaching from this way wasn't the most technically sound way, right? So I had to slow down a ton, can't really use that, kind of got to jump over. This way, I'm able to use the speed, kind of carry over. So that could be an example of where technique matters, right? Um, same thing with my swing. So at Hit Tracks this past week, hopefully it was our last Hit Tracks tournament, hopefully again, we're outdoors, but uh, set a new average PR. Um, so like all of your swings combined, what's your average velo? So that's kind of showing you how many times you're hitting barrel. And then max PR and max distance, all new, were set last Friday. It was just a slight switch from going here to a double overlap, giving more leverage on the bat, right? More length on the bat, creating a longer lever, being able to whip through, lose a little bit of control. But if you're able to control it, get way more average velo on things and more, way more max velo on things, right? So that's where technique, small things like that, small shifts can matter. Um, it's more so technique doesn't matter when it's like, I want you to look 
this way. I want you to be this way. So there's got to be a balance there with finding when the technical shifts matter and when they don't. And I think a lot of times coaches overemphasize the importance of these technical shifts without any data to kind of back it up. Like you go into a hit tracks thing or you go to whatever your sport is, when you implement the technical shift, is it helping or hurting, right? Or is it just looking better, right? What's the result? Look at it that way rather than looking at how it looks. And what's the feel for the athlete? What's the consistency like for the athlete? What's their confidence in that technical model for the certain athlete? And if that's not there, none of what we're talking about matters, right? So I think a lot of times coaches get stuck up in their own model of what it's supposed to be rather than work on the adaptive model of what it works like, look what it looks like with the athlete. And um, that's where you could argue, uh, not even argue, but you definitely can have aspects where you're just exposing an athlete, and this is something I value a lot, exposing an athlete to a ton of technical models and letting them pick their own technical model, letting them pick their own way to solve things. So with a bat, maybe it's holding in a split stance, holding completely overlap, holding one finger overlap, maybe holding normal baseball grip, and then just letting them pick from there, right? Um, you could even do like a heavy bat, light bat, certain things like that, let them try it out, let them feel what they like so that they're not stuck in the certain techno model that they just picked up from maybe a different coach or from the first time that they started playing. But once they are exposed to a ton of technical models, let them pick the one that they're most confident in, the one that's giving them the best results, the one that feels the best for them, and then you can kind of play and trigger from there and, and work on things. But um, that's a beauty in giving different technical models to athletes rather than just demanding that they have this one specific technical model that probably doesn't fit perfectly with them. And the ones that it does fit with probably would have found that in the variety approach anyways. So something to think about. Here we go. Oh, come on. Oh, my butt, come on. Oh, there we go. Nice and money. All right, we'll end on that one. Um, I might come back to another set. We'll see how we're feeling. And uh, we got depth drops and some uh, Olympic lifts. Let's go. So Olympic lift variation today. We're doing no catch. We're just going to go high pulls from the ground. Just working on that triple extension there. Um, working on the ability to pull from the ground. Something I suck at anyways. But cutting the catches strictly because the lower back feels a little bit cranky today. Um, and doesn't handle that compression super well. Especially since we got 10 rep max squats that I kind of want to get after today as well. Um, but that's just something when, when you have something programmed right. Try to find the closest possible substitution that you can do. And at the end of the day, if I really wanted to catch uh, the cleans today, I really could. Um, but I just, I just don't think it's uh, really worth it and worth the, the delay, um, especially since we got our first tournament on Saturday. We can get a lot of really good stuff out of the polls. Um, but try to find something that is close as a substitution. You don't have to cut everything out, right? Find something that is a close substitute, something that doesn't bug it as much, um, or you're still getting a high quality stimulus in. And um, a lot of times, the more you move, the more you stay to your schedule, the more you stay true to that, the faster and better you feel, um, rather than trying to avoid everything. And then a lot of times, this is what athletes do. They'll avoid everything, then they'll hop back into everything at like 100 miles an hour. So they'll go like no week, no, two weeks of no exercise, two weeks of no squatting, two weeks of no deadlifting, whatever it is that they kind of cut out of their program. And then as soon as they start to feel good, they hop back into squatting, hop back into deadlifting. So not only did they miss out on those two weeks of stimulus where they could have got better and uh, grew some things and um, improved on what they wanted to improve on, now they don't have the tolerance to back squatting or don't have the tolerance to deadlifting that they would have had if they had went through those two weeks and they spike their volume. And one of the number one causes of injury is just a spike of volume, something the body's not prepared for it. You spike your volume back up, you spike your intensity back up, you go from zero to 100 rather than from 80 to 100, right? And when you go from zero to 100, a lot of bad things happen. And then they tweak their back again, they tweak their hammy again, whatever it is. Sprinting is another big one where they, they don't do really much return to play. Um, they just start to feel better and then they sprint again and they pull it, right? So trying to go from 80 back to 100 and gradually build back up to 100 rather than going from zero to 100. I, wanna even, I would put myself at like 95 right now, 96. Um, it just, it's more feel based right now. And I just know I can piss it off by being a meathead by adding in a ton of compression stuff here. So anyways, that's kind of the thought process there. When you have something that is nagging at you, when you have an injury, try to stay as close to the plan as you can. So then when you hop back in and when you're starting to really feel good, you don't have to start all the way back over. You can continue the path that you were already on. And uh, you just took a week or so off on certain exercises like catching the Olympic lift, but we're still getting the pull of the Olympic lift and still getting the weights and holding that, right? So let's go crush it. Oof. Ooh. Ooh. All right, set number two here. Let's go. Ooh. Ooh. 
Ooh. All right, set number three here. Let's rip. Oh. Oof. Oh, man, let's go. A couple things after watching that last set. Hat backwards, just absolutely not the move. Um, and confirming that I'm absolutely dog water at uh, high pulse, bro. It's like the worst part of my uh, worst part of my skill set in a clean. I can get underneath the bar pretty quickly, just clean, like squat it all up. Um, have pretty much for most of my life. When I was high school um, weightlifting and we were doing like 300 plus all the time, it was all just like throw that bar up as fast as possible and just like jump underneath it and then front squat it up and be able to use the quads to be able to get that up. Um, but actually getting the hips and getting any pull from the bottom part of it, which I think is a very important part of actually having anything from these transfer into like jumps or athletics, right? Um, not super great at. So definitely something I continue to work on and will continue to work on, but let's do it. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, gotta redo that set, that was trash. Ooh, come on. Ooh, come on. Oh, much better. All right, let's go. Last set here because you gotta keep overshooting, right? If, if you have an RP nine to 10, you have to hit an RP 11 to 12, right? Super simple game. So let's do it. Ooh. 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 Oh. With straps, that was obviously, but significantly easier. We're gonna keep pumping weight there. That was nice. I hit myself in kind of the, the area I need to not hit myself and that hurt. They should be a send here, but I mean, if I went beast mode like I did last, last set, you never know. But if this isn't, if this doesn't bother me, I don't know what will. Let's go. Ooh. 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 Yeah. All right, not as pretty, but we'll count it. Been squatting in between the sets there, uh, just doing warm-up squats. So we'll hit into a, a working set of the squat. We'll kind of see what the weight's like there. And we got squats and depth drops here. So let's go. 10 rep max on the squats here. Gonna be nice and fun, bro. There's something, I'm talking about like some people love, love the, the, the pain or like the pump of something. Bro, that ain't me, that ain't me. When we start getting high reps with the, these, these lifts, bro, fucks me up, fucks me up mentally. Just, just, I don't drive as much as I need to, you know? You give me heavy one rep maxers, oh, I'll fucking send that all day, every single day. Some people hate that. That's me with this bodybuilding type stuff, bro. Especially with squats, bro. I don't need bigger quads, what am I doing? Just kidding, but yeah, building up, 10 rep max, let's go. Nothing about that felt heavy, except the desire that you have 10 fucking reps and just no desire for that. Man, all right, keep adding weight until we get body. Let's go. So I messed up the camera and we missed our 275 set, which was a freaking grinder. So of course we have to go up to 315 for the camera because maybe it just wasn't enough weight for the camera to record. I don't know what I actually did. You, there's a big red button on there that shows me that it's recording. I swear it was going, but I just look back through my videos. There's nothing there. So we're gonna, we're gonna please the camera gods. We're gonna please the squat gods. We'll go 315 for a 10 rep max. Or this is probably gonna be the last one um, just because it's gonna be heavy and my legs are gonna be sore and I'm soft, but we'll see. Maybe we crush it. I don't know, you never know. Let's go. Man, Woo. 
a little uh, makeshift slant board. Really nice. Oh, Cause it's cheap. It's just a little makeshift one. It's a little bit too hard on the toes. Oh. Oh, that's cardio. My calves are cramping because of the slant board instead of my legs pumping. It's a little bit up on the toes. Damn, that was heavy. Didn't feel like it destroyed the quads though or anything else, but we'll probably count that as the last set. I just keep ripping from there. Good little stim. Let's go. And then we got our final five uh, depth drops here, depth rebound jumps here. As soon as we hit, we're going to pop back up. Uh, still not crazy heights just because I'm trying to work on that rebound off, be a little bit more elastic. Don't be a meathead. These actually felt really good today. So keep rolling. Let's go. Ooh. Ooh. Ah, there we go. All right. Ripping those. We got some accessories. Then we're out. Let's go. Dead. First hip exercise we got here. We got split stance. We're going here. We got 100 total reps. I'm gonna go center here. Picking up the leg, waddling back and forth here. Working that glute, just like this. Working deeper into that split. We got 100 of them, just bouncing back and forth. This one's nice. It's not too, too taxing. I wanna say this is my keeper. It was a little, little bit, bit of an experiment, but it was nice. It was better than I thought. Get a lot of split work in, sinking deeper into it, get that glute working, and we're ripping. Let's go. I look like I'm dancing, bro. Watching myself in this video. Like hitting a like 70s like kickboxing. All right. Yeah. All right. That's a good one. Second set of those. Those are nice. Get the glutes firing. Babe and a mump. We're gonna hit these Copenhagen rotations. I'm gonna show you those. Then we got a Nordic ISO. Then we out ski today. Let's go. And we got these Copenhagen rotations here. Got these from Range of Strength. These are money. I like these rotational aspects through the groin. I think it's super important to be able to move these here. So it's going to be this position here. I'm going to rotate this underneath foot all the way up and over. Oh, I'm feeling that stretch through. These are nice. Again, these could be hip mobility, hip strengthening. Um, most athletes just are not going to be super great at these. Uh, Really, any Copenhagen athletes kind of tend to stink at. That adductor is not a super strong muscle in a lot of athletes. <sighs> Hockey athletes is really strong in usually. <sighs> but a lot of football guys, no way, no. You have them hold a Copenhagen plank for like 30 seconds and they get crushed. Those are really nice. Again, really anything that is adding a rotational piece, especially to the hips, I think is absolute money. I think it's really hard to train specific muscles and get them all in with like certain special movements. Whereas if you go rotational, it really tends to kind of tie everything in together, weirdly enough. Um, and it's a much simpler way to do it. So hit the other side and go from there. This is Henry's money angle here. Yeah, see, that one's nice. Gets the, the hip flexor with that adductor and works that whole kind of cross there. Really nice, enjoy that one. We're gonna hit some Nordic isos here. We're gonna finish off with those and we're out ski today. Got after it with our main lifts, got after it with our jumps. In and out, good day, let's go. All right, last time we got here, it's two minute hold here, straight position. Get the timer ready here. Nice and simple, just a little burner. Here we go. <sighs> Actively pulling with these hamstrings. Whew, this one's nice. <clears throat> yeah, this one's gonna get me. Ooh, pulling with those hamstrings, they're gonna die. Oh my God. <sighs> Come on. <laughs> How much time we got left? Oh my god. Mm. Oh. 
<laughs> oh, little mini break, little mini break. Here we go, here we go. Finish strong, let's go. Oh, those hamstrings are tearing up the bone. All right, last one, let's go. Come on. Oh, this is my worst. Sure enough, quit. Sure enough, quit. Oh my God, they are cramping. Shh, shh, come on, come on. Come on, how much time we got? Come on. Oh my god. Oh my god. Holy fucking fuck, bro. Come on. Give it to me. Give it to me. 12 seconds. Come on. Shh. Shh. Come on. Oh. Come on. Oh my god. Uh, those are fucking ass. Those are ass. Yep, confirmed. All right. We're going to walk out of here. We're going to do a breakaway video. And then we leave forever. Never come back. Ever. Oh, my God. Ooh. I got shot this time. Oh. All right. So that is a day. My hamstrings feel like they're going to rip off the bone. Brutal, man. Brutal. Um, make sure they're gone. But if you are a parent, man, it's not about you. Oh my God, bro. Sorry, there was just a parent in here that's coaching their kid. It's just so bad. It's so bad, it's so toxic. It's all about the parent. It's all about what the parent knows and how the parent can take control of the kid. At some points during that session, the, if the kid did something wrong, the parent would take the bat and just be like, just do it like this, and it would swing. It was a terrible swing. The kid had a better swing than the parent. What are we talking about right now? Man, oh, that is how you ruin sports for people. So um, don't do that. It's not about you. Find a spot in your life where you feel seen, where it doesn't have to be taken out on your kid or doesn't have to be taken out on your athletes. I think that's an important aspect to life. You gotta find a spot where you're a man. You gotta find a spot where you are seen, you are heard, um, you feel important, you feel like you have worth because otherwise you will find that spot. In other aspects, you will, you will create these fake kind of dynamics that are not real life and that's how you have fake coaches like that. So. We are gonna go, it's supposed to be like 48 degrees today, so we'll get outside, we'll hit some, hit some balls off the tee, and uh, tomorrow will be upper body. We'll hit our typical Monday lift tomorrow, uh, 10 rep max on the floor press today, tomorrow. We haven't floor pressed in a while, and uh, we should be feeling pretty good. Hammies are, uh, hammies are pumped, hammies are pulsing right now, about ready to cramp. Uh, I got, uh, what do I got for lunch? I got a sirloin steak, pretty pumped about that. It's gonna be good. So, that's it, appreciate you guys watching, appreciate you guys supporting. Keep chopping the wood, let's go.